on that night after dinner where we, we were in favor of the hurricane, but we really didn't think that it would be so s serious. So after dinner, we, we went to our usual place to sleep. The wind started blowing, started blowing very slowly, and then it started more rapidly. And then I told my husband, you know what? We'll have to get out of here. So then we knew we had a, a basement. So I helped him to go down the steps. But by the time I reached down with him, I could hardly come back up to close the door that I had left behind. Anyway, we went in, in a very little cozy corner. All we had with us was an extra shirt to put on and a flask of coffee. And then we stayed there. And eventually, the wind started getting stronger and stronger. So we had two chairs in the corner. We sat, and all we could do is pray. And then um, afterwards, the wind was so strong that at one time, the water, we felt water coming down our way, seeping our way. I told him, you know what? The roof is gone. Then we stayed there. I started crying. He told me, don't, don't cry. I started praying and I prayed. We had only one cat came to seek for shelter with us. We stayed there. And then we had a sip of coffee. And then about midnight, we heard um, some voices calling us. It was, there were two friends who, were, who had come to look out for us. And then when they saw the damage up, they passed this way and they came to look for us. They called and we answered. And they asked, are you all safe? Are you all alive? We said, yes, and they left. And then the wind continued. We stayed there, we, never, we couldn't sleep. We started getting wet. And then we waited until the dawn of day when I could make my way out. And I, I told him to stay there still, I'm coming. I made my way out. I came and looked out. I told him, then I told him, Gucci, everything is gone. Everything is gone. And I came back. I brought him out. We walked out over broken um, window panes and so. And then I moved, I left him in the bus shelter with no roof on, on the other side. And I'm, I told him I'm going to his brother's home to see if we can get a rescue there. We had a bus at Little Noah. His brother came for the afternoon to secure it. And that is what I met. That's what I met my brother-in-law his daughter, his granddaughter, his great-granddaughter, and a friend. They were all in that bus with water about two feet high around the bus. And the, their roof was gone. And I met a brood, my other brother-in-law in his van on the road up with his wife. And then I was all soaked. I came back down and I told him, Fant, his roof is gone. So we have nowhere to go. But he has another, he has two sons. So one is at his home and the other one is by his um, children's mother. So he came. After a while he came and then he opened up for us and we went in. And then I tried to see if I could find a dry clothes for him and for myself. And then that was it. And we got, two we got some friends who were passing, we asked them to start helping us to, to see in the rubble upstairs what we had left to secure some stuff for us, our passport got wet, my certificate of title, 
it too got wet. We had our medication with us and because we had very little time to run with anything when we thought it was really serious. So then I just thank God for life. Because I, what I say, the only thing is that we have to start all over again. It's like we, we just came to a place and we have nothing. Then everything got wet, every blessed thing got wet. And then I spent days and days and days washing by hand in a ravine on the other side. That was the only little source of water at the time. And he was here. I had to be carrying water to, to, to do the dishes, carrying water for him to bathe until we were able to start going to the river. And then from there, things started picking up gradually, gradually, and coming back to a little normalcy. <laughs> and it was all myself, alone, 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 alone. So it was, it was, uh, I do not want to experience another one like this. So inside, my father was the only one outside on the, uh, on the uh, concrete step. And my, my mom was calling to him, come inside and talk to the children because they have never seen a, a hurricane. Come and talk to them, you, you are outside. But he spent the whole day outside. That was at my mom in 1979. But David was nothing compared to Maria. They um, put in their little um, things together, who probably who were not at shelters. Some people did go to shelters, some did not. So those who did not go, they started putting up their little bits and pieces together so they could have a shelter over their head. And then the food was a crisis. <laughs> we had to depend on, <laughs> on relief. But I suppose we are getting over it slowly. Every thing of mine got wet, but I quickly wash up the, the most needy pieces and dry them. To do all the washing all by myself, all alone, I know I'm suffering with, I don't know, um, sprain or strain muscles. And right now I have to undergo uh, an x-ray. Because anything strenuous, I, a little strenuous thing I do, I feel it when I go to sleep at nights and I wake up, I do not sleep again because the arms are painful. To have, um, when you don't have a shelter of your own over you, you know, and you're in somebody else's place, you have to be so careful and you know you're not, you're just, you are just uncomfortable. It was of some value, but maybe many of us didn't take it seriously. It was of value, but many of us, including myself, because I, I thought, you know, we, after David, the, or, or there were other hurricanes which never caused such destruction. So for me, I didn't really take it serious, really seriously, because I said, um, maybe, you know, it would just be strong winds and maybe we would pass somewhere else, maybe go to some other island and we would not be affected, but not knowing that it was, was for us. Maybe there should be more um, shelters in place. More shelters and that people can really go to those shelters. So those who feel insecure could go to the shelters early, early enough. I, I'm in fear. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing what we witness, what we experience. And in the event of another warning and what a um, hurricane, I'm not moving from there. <laughs> because I feel, although it, it, well, it got wet and, and inside there is a bit mildew, but um, I feel we are safer here. Because that is what I, I from the onset of the hurricane, from the past, I, from the time I was seeking help, I said we are the broken area, it is more secure. It is more secured in terms of building a, 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 a house, you know, in that little corner there and maybe do some casting, whatever, and be more secure. Uh -huh. well, we worked, I worked 31 years for the, for the Dominica, he worked 48 years together. 
We have given 69 years of service, at least we deserve something. We deserve our help. And <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but I could see the help was coming very, very, very slow. And maybe we would be one, one among the last to be helped because of political reasons. But God, God is great. God will never let his children perish. Mm -hmm. So I'm still hoping for the better. <laughs> there is hope. <laughs>